Oh, Shalom, in Yeshua's name. Uh, I haven't really done a sort of a Bible reading video for a little while, so really got encouraged to do that. Been suffering with a cold, almost going into a flu, but got sorted out with some good stuff last night. Some ginger and uh, ginger lemon and honey. Really does the trick. Really really just heals, you just feel a lot of healing going on there, so so praise God. So I just wanted to encourage the the brethren out there. I know it must be very challenging to listen to a Scotsman who is talking about Yeshua, about the Torah, about the you know Mandela effect. So I commend you. Uh, Yeshua says in Luke six twenty six um, in fact, let's go a verse before that. Sorry, yeah. Let's just read that verse. Luke six twenty six. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for their fathers did according to these things to the false prophets. But I say to you, the ones hearing love, the hostile ones of you, do well to the ones hating you. Bless the ones cursing you and pray for them hating you. Um, hallelujah. And so it's, it's good that uh, maybe I'm, I'm persecuted in, in, in different ways because God allows this to show the saints that you know these are genuine apostles, you know, if you're getting persecuted and it's really through no fault of your own, if all you're doing serving the Lord, you know, besides all your personal stuff going on in your personal life, um, you know, we should try and keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Try to do that, man. You know, try to show love to people and they've lied about me, I've tried to help people and they've, um, stolen from me, I've tried to uh, pray for people and they've been healed and then they've they've cursed me for it, you know. It's happened man, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, when Jesus prayed for people and there was, uh, I think, nine lepers went away and then one came back and thanked him. What did the other nine do? You have no idea what they did, you know. Uh, their hearts probably weren't right before God, Some, of, most of them. What one of them actually thanked him, which means that their heart, his heart, would be close to the kingdom of God. I, I would have said Yeshua would have said to him, you know. Uh, I think that even the name Jew means to thank and to praise and to venerate and extol the Most High God. So one true Jew out of ten, you know, when he, he healed these ten lepers, but here in Luke six. 26, um, you know, what do you and men speak well of you, you know, never mind these big mega ministries, man, they, they're actually going to curse you if you follow these big mega ministries, now there's some good YouTube ministries, and they have some good followings, yes, and, but you can see that they can get, they get persecuted uh, in different ways, some of it legitimate, because it turns out they're using drugs, because it turns out um, they're just in it for money, which is, sadly, there's a few YouTube channels like that. I mean, really, uh, you know, I, again, and, and I brought that up to, to some Christian friends uh, a couple of years ago when I made a video about one of the YouTube channels, and they were like, oh, that woman's, uh, she, she brings a good message. She's, she's, nothing, she's got a good family life, and I just felt in my heart, you know, I prayed about it, and so another sister in the Lord really confirmed what, what God was showing me, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just that. I mean, there's, there, I don't think there's any harm in presenting a message and, you know, having a news channel or having a gospel channel and, get, and getting people to, to give money into your ministry, but to demand tithes and stuff like that, that's, that's just, no. Not, 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 not everyone can do that. A woman can't do that. A woman can't be a pastor. A woman can't be a pastor. You know, there's, 
the certain parameters that are there in order for uh, the church to adhere to because the church is meant to work together as a body. It's not meant to just shoot off into little individual groups or individuals and then and then these people really taint what, what other brothers and sisters are doing in the message that they're, that they're giving, the less popular channels. There's a lot of channels that I like uh, in YouTube. I'm not seeing a lot of them, but some of them are very good and the fact that some of them they're not even Christians but they, they do give quite a good uh, faithful report and message out there especially about you know the UFO reports and stuff like that which uh, the Lord gave me revelation about when I got saved and and again that's something if you speak about it you know you're even it's never been a popular thing to you know for someone to come out and say oh they've been abducted or so I haven't been abducted but I've always speculated that, you know, when the Lord um, was on his fast, perhaps towards the end of the fast, we don't know what form uh, Satan appeared in. You know, some could speculate that uh, Satan could have appeared in uh, a UFO at some point and took him up into a high mountain, as it says in some translations, or it actually says took him up on top of the, the temple or the temple mount, or on top of the temple, um, and told him, uh, you know, basically um, tempted Yeshua um, to, I believe, to jump off the top of it, you know, because, you know, Satan misquoted a verse about, you know, uh, that you're, you're not going to dash your foot against a stone, and, you know, Satan's perverting that to try and cause a man of God to commit suicide. That's what Satan, That's one of the things Satan tried to do uh, to Yeshua. If you're walking seriously with God, you're going to come up against some very dark powers, um, some very spiritually dark powers on this earth. Um, spiritual dark powers, but some of them are going to manifest physically. They, they can't do that. Um, you know, there's been men of God with reports out there, radio stations, uh, and they've experienced these same things. From a Christian perspective, they've been able to understand what these entities are. Uh, it's just that in these last days, there's, yeah, there is a lot of agents out there, and there's a lot of... They, they really do anticipate some sort of a... What would you say? Um, UFO disclosure worldwide thing, but it's not going to be the whole biblical truth telling you that there are fallen entities that that uh, that they want to control humanity you know through through their mark the microchip they're not they're never going to tell you that they're just they're going to they're going to lie and say oh well you know these these beings created this all no 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 these beings abduct God's creation these beings uh, manipulate yes and sometimes change genetically change God's creation but largely God's creation is, is, is stayed intact, you know, dog producing dog, cat after cat for thousands of years since Noah's flood. But Jesus did say the last days will be like the days of Noah. So, yes, these fallen entities somehow, I believe, they've gotten released out of a lot of their captivity the past 50, 100 years. And this is why we got the two world wars. This is why we got the 1947 Roswell incident and so on. Um, Satan, a lot of these entities have been getting out of their, their, their holding places, they've probably been in for thousands of years and they're educating humanity into uh, genetic manipulation and uh, the return of the Nephilim as well which uh, they want to try and make mankind slaves to them again as they were as they were you know, before the flood of Noah mostly the these Nephilim enslaved uh, human populations uh, for their own ends, for their own amusement, really. So, the other verse that I was very encouraged to share with you today, well, or sorry, the verse, just the word, uh, I just want to share a word with you, and that word is faith. Now, the word of faith movement is all about new age deception, it's all about imagining what you want you know, oh Lord, what is it I want again? What is, that? what is that again? You want me to have a a Mercedes? What was that, Lord? Oh, 
a ten bed, twelve. No, sorry, Lord, what was that? I, I misheard. Twelve bedroom house. No. <laughs> the Word of Faith movement is a very corrupt movement. Why? Because it's not preaching the gospel. Yeah, everybody knows that. Anyone can, anyone can see that. This, this is a Christian. But the Bible does talk about faith, and Yeshua says, for those who are in Him. For those who are truly born again, not these nutcases on God TV, right? Those who are truly born again, you can ask for whatever in my name and it shall be given unto you. You know, so I, I was kind of looking, you know, this year for example, always use my authorized version. I have several copies, my, my, you know, from my dad and you know, my father had several copies. Inherited a few of them and just uh, I, I was I was quite quite familiar with it um, a lot of the verses certainly um, we've discussed the fact that from the actual Word of God meaning that the Greek and Hebrew scripts in this case the Hebrew script there is no scripture now that talks about the lion and the lamb it's, I think that the two or three cases in the book of Isaiah I think it's mostly in Isaiah it talks about the wolf and the lamb now, not the lion and the lamb, the wolf and the lamb. So I believe that's the only part of the you know the Mandela effect that's, that's really has changed. The rest of it seems to be down to Bible translations. And uh, so this KJ3, for some reason, I don't know why, uh, I believe this. New Testament is the best. I, I would highly recommend you invest in a few copies of this, especially the New Testament, because in the New Testament, um, it's, it's still got the Greek names in, you know, Jesus for Yeshua. And I'm not sure if it says Jehovah, that's, that, that's the thing. I do, not, I do not hold to that name. In fact, I don't even like to say that name because... I do not believe that that name um, is the name of the one true God. I believe his name is Yote Vafi, and you can say you can that, that just you know phonetically transposes over to English as Yahweh very easily. Um, that is the name that I got when I when I was born again. I asked God's name, and it just came out of my mouth. I started to prophesy in the name of, the name of Yahweh, you know, the, the name of the Father. Um, so that's the only thing. If you get a Old and New Testament, uh, KJ3, you know, literal translation. They do mention the name of Jehovah. Uh, like, you don't even like saying it. But it should appeal maybe to JWs. Um, if you really want a, a proper Bible, you know, get a KJ3. But for me, I'd, I'd love to maybe just get a roll of stickers and just stick Yahweh over where it says Jehovah. But that's the last time I'll mention that that word I promise but um, you know there's a lot of articles out there about who that name is and it's not it's not the name of the God of the Bible it's not the name of the one true God it's a hybrid name and in fact uh, very close to a name probably of a fallen entity so that's why I don't I don't like mentioning it you know I had a friend that had um, was, was sort of meditating on that name too much and and they got they got spiritually attacked so yeah, I uh, you know I just told them to try and meditate on God's name, but that's the only discrepancy within um, the KJ3 is, is sadly um, it doesn't translate the name of God properly, but otherwise it's as it uh, hands down is the best Bible translation. Now, as an example of praying a faith prayer to the Lord, please lead me to the best translation today of your word and he, he really got me to study these things um, another good faith prayer um, is well, what is faith to start with um, I feel as if the Holy Spirit wanted, wanted me to explain that if you can imagine when a baby's born and uh, it, you know its muscles, its bones aren't strong enough to actually walk and yet they're looking around their pram and they're seeing people walking around. Some people are even running. And the baby's looking like, that is amazing. How are they doing that? And I'm sitting here, and they're actually out there running and 
and they're walking around and that is amazing. It's amazing to a child to start to behold things, to see things, to try to look at themselves and look at themselves and say, oh, I wonder when I'm. You know, they're not, they're not thinking as in we think with words, but they're sort of connecting um, movement with thought, you know. Um, so eventually, maybe after, I think nine months was when I started walking, and so, so did my son after nine months. And uh, which was probably too, too early, by the way. And I would recommend breast milk. I, I remember when I took these, these steps, I remember quite a lot about my childhood actually. I think God was with me through the Holy Spirit quite early in, in, in my life. And I just remember that time when I stood up, I was in the living room. I think it was in the living room, yeah I was in the living room. And um, decided just to stand up. And my, my mother was in the kitchen. And I, I took a few steps, you know, very slowly and uh, still nothing in the kitchen, mother was doing the dishes or something. And then I decided to sort of try to run a little bit. I tried to run, went into the kitchen and I felt my legs buckle a little bit under me, I remember that. Um, but, and then my mother, I think she grabbed me or something like that and she was like all happy and, you know, I was happy and we're all happy. I remember that. So that took faith. It takes faith for a baby to actually um, negate these thoughts, put it into action, you know, and, and to try it for themselves. It takes faith. And so when you read about something in God's Word about Yeshua saying to his disciples, you know, I want you to go out and preach the gospel. I want you to make converts of different nations. I want you to uh, preach my Word, which is it's, it's a big thing. Telling, telling nations about what sin is, about what pleases God, um, most of all about Yeshua, you know, about how to get saved, about the Holy Spirit, about praying for people to get healed. And, and, and yet people say, uh, oh, that's just for the first century church. No, that's where the first century church were telling the apostles. Hey apostles, we, we don't want these gifts. We don't want to be called like uh, crazy nutcases and locked up in dungeons and prisons. Sorry apostles, like, that's just for you. Jesus gave that to you. We don't want to. We're happy being saved, the happy clappies. We're happy doing that. But, but as far as praying for people to get healed and uh, maybe speaking in tongues and all that stuff, you know, it's just for, it's just for you guys. And the Apostle Paul said, hey, hey, wait wait a minute, Corinthians. Hey, wait a minute, Ephesians. And he started to write about the spiritual gifts to these congregations, telling them that these are spiritual gifts for them. And the fact that they, no matter what's going on, no matter what type of sin is going on, even the Epistle John says, if you're, if you're faithful to admit your sin, to the High Priest Yeshua, you know, if you're careful to admit it and to repent about it, ask Him for, for forgiveness, He will forgive us because he is, he is faithful. You know, the Epistle of John writes about that. It's just such an explosion of God power going on in the first century. Um, even among a people that, that were just, just in sin, all different types of sin and, and, and uh, degradation and, 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 and darkness really much like today actually because the church has not been um, a moral light for the nations in fact even you could argue the Jewish people in a lot of respects have still been have still been a fairly good light even though you know when they moved into Hollywood it seems that all hell is broken loose from, from that episode but um, going down the past 2,000 years, at times they've, they, they, they have shown good moral character. Many Jews have shown good moral, moral character. Many Jews haven't shown good moral character, just like the Gentiles, just like the churches. You know, ask yourself, if you, if you stayed in the United States over 100 years ago, 150 years ago, you stayed in Britain, 
90% of Christian churches would not have been observing the pagan festivals within the past few days. And this next one that they just invented recently apparently is the birth of the sun god. Not the son of God, but the sun god. And yet, you allow Satan to deceive you with that knowledge. Um, and it's pagan. It's wickedness. And when we have different gods before Yahweh, you know, our creator, the God of gods, he's zealous for his people. If you're his child, he'll pull you out of that. If you're his child and, and you're fellowshipping with people in ignorance, he'll pull you out of that. He'll say, leave that church to me. You witness to them what I have told you, my word, what it says about Yeshua coming to fulfill the Jewish festivals or the biblical festivals, more to the point, and you're now a spiritual Jew. So that means that you're born again through the Holy Spirit. You know, that you're one with the God of Israel through the Messiah, and that through your life, that the God of Israel is going to live his life through you through the Holy Spirit. Kind of get your mind around that. That's what being a true Christian is. But uh, being a false Christian is just being a, a little puppet on a string, being pulled along, being told lies, being told that you know you don't have any power to heal the sick or pray for anyone, or you don't want to be doing all that stuff. You're going to get persecuted, man. People are going to speak bad things about you. You don't want that. You just you just want to be a little pew warmer. You just want to go in there once a week, out there, do your job, feed your family back in there, do your job, like a good little puppet. Uh, you know that being a, a true daughter or child, son or daughter of the Son of God, is not easy, not an easy thing in this world. A lot of Christians, yeah, if you truly are a Christian, have you really given your life to God, like as in, Lord, no matter what happens, here's my life, just take my life, no matter what, what happens, I know you're with me, please teach me your truth, please um, use me as a vessel for your honour and your glory, just please use me, Lord, no matter what happens to me, I want to be with you, I believe your word, I trust in your name, I believe in who Yeshua is, what he did for me on the cross. Uh, have, have any Christians really said that as sinner's prayer? with a degree of sincerity. I mean, there's only one degree of sincerity. It's everything or nothing. Uh, and, and, and if you didn't really say that prayer with sincerity, if, if you were at like a Benny Hinn crusade or a Joyce Meyer crusade, and they're getting you to say the sinner's prayer, the, the, that place does not have the, the, spirit, the true spirit of God in it, the true spirit of humility, repentance. Um, the, the true gospel is not being preached at these at these uh, congregations, and so a lot of people who, who thought that maybe they gave their life uh, to Jesus Christ, you know, at uh, any of these types of crusades in the past, they've probably heard a false gospel, and they've, they've probably not really fully considered that they're going to be persecuted, that. Um, that all of the Bible from beginning to end, including the Holy Spirit, is for them. And if and if anyone tells them any different, then they're actually disobeying the Word of God, the Apostles, Jesus Christ, and the entire Bible. And uh, they almost certainly won't make it into the Kingdom of God. Almost certainly won't make it into the Kingdom of God. Because if you think you're just going to make it in through like a sinner, a, a fake sinner's prayer, Oh Lord, forgive me, and you know, thank you, bye, and then put a Christmas tree up, and then um, just live like the world. Maybe you stop drinking, big deal. Maybe you don't smoke, but you're still into worldly things, Christmas. You're still um, teaching falsehood. You're still saying that, that God, that, you know, God won't use you to heal anyone. God, God the gift of tongues is, is witchcraft. Some, some so-called Christians, you know, on YouTube teach that. I know I watch a few of them because they make, a, they make a few other good points and things like that. And I've recommended them to other believers, but that's for, that's for the discernment of those who are watching, if you understand. The fact is that a lot of us, we have ministries that are, have certain truths and certain gifts within them. But if you truly want to walk with the Lord, 
um, takes faith and we must preach that. We must preach the true gospel and we must preach that um, the, the, the righteous must live by faith. I'll put the scripture below so you can check that out if you don't believe me. I think I'm just making this up. The righteous live by faith. It's, I believe that's from the Old Testament and it's quoted again. I believe by the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, but I'll clear that up now. So, what else can I say right now? You know, a lot of us evaluate how the year has gone because because we've been brought up this way. We think that it's the end of a year when in fact it's not even uh, the beginning or end of a year or the or nothing. You know, it's just the Roman year, and the, the Roman year starts at the darkest time uh, of the year. Just like, uh, you know, a, a Roman day begins at the darkest time of the night. But in the Bible, if you want to learn about how, how, how what a day is in the Bible, a day begins at first light. Just as the birds are chirping, that's when a day starts. Not in the, not at twelve midnight, and and a godly, biblical day starts when the the birds start chirping and that sun is coming up. That light, in other words, is is coming up. That sun isn't a god, by the way. Just thought I'd clear that up. And you know, a biblical year starts when you know uh, things start to bloom. You know, uh, the flowers start to to burst out and. You know, you get your first crop, first harvest of that year, which is the, the wild barley in the fields. That's when the year starts. Um, a biblical year starts. So it's really when light and life starts, that's when God starts. Just like Jesus when he resurrected from the dead. It was just the early, early hours of the morning. He got up there. And he was out before, before anyone was anyone knew what was happening, you know, and then when his followers, was it Mary Magdalene and others, you know, were looking for him, um, and they were looking around and they were asking him who they thought was the gardener, hey, I mean, I thought, is that not Jesus' tomb over there? I just see that the, is that not rolled away there? I mean, have you any idea where he could be? He was already up, praising the Lord, praising his father, you know, already up praying, already up, stretching his legs, breathing the air, you know, and I had the great pleasure, of course, of walking around, you know, the, the garden tomb last year, it was such an amazing thing, um, and I prayed about it, and I, and I know the Lord wanted, wanted me to take, I think I made a video about it, the Lord wanted me to take my camera into the tomb, and then come back out and pray in tongues, which some, normally I don't do on my YouTube channel, and then I actually, uh, it was my other phone, my other phone still is not fixed, it's not working um, at the moment until I get it fixed. But when I came out the term, there, there was Christians from Brazil there. And I think I paused the video and then they just started speaking in tongues. And then I, I believe I started up the video again. And so that was just a confirmation to me that the Lord had spoken to me and that Maybe even even Jesus himself, when he got resurrected, that he he spoke in the heavenly tongue, which is a pure dialect, possibly of um, very ancient Hebrew, maybe the same language as Adam and Eve spoke. I mean, Adam and Eve spoke that pure dialect of of a heavenly tongue. So they say that the ancient Hebrew again is is quite a lot different from the modern Hebrew. It's almost like a completely different language. In a lot of ways, it sounds a bit different as well. So, uh, anyhow, the gift of tongues, that there is the, there is tongues of men and there is tongues of angels, my friends. This is what the Apostle Paul taught, who is in heaven right now. He's not a false convert. He, he was a Pharisee. He, he did teach probably 90% um, of the things that uh, the New Testament teaches except when he was converted he knew they were true and then God added the rest you know through the Holy Spirit that he didn't know and that, that he couldn't work out that Judaism had gotten wrong over the years that the Holy Spirit just corrects it all when we get born again and we can you know we know when 
the true day of Pentecost is according to the Bible. We know about heavenly tongues. We know that God can use us to heal people. We know that um, we are vessels of honor, not vessels of wrath. We know that um, God fights for us when we are standing for him. And God fights for us. And I think um, I just got to encourage you in that aspect and probably end the video at this point. And I've said quite a lot. Some of you will emphatically agree with what I've said and some of you will have already switched off because it's been too much for you. But listening to a, a Scotsman talk about Yeshua and just all too much. But you got a grain of mustard seed of faith. Maybe you're still listening. Maybe you're just going to say, I'm going to start praying to the Lord. I'm going to start um, praying in Yeshua's name and see what happens. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask God if I can lay hands on people maybe and they'll be healed. I'm going to ask God for the gift of tongues and you just wait on the Lord. Don't get impatient. Just wait on him and he'll direct you. He'll direct you. Just wait and then he'll give you instructions. This is how God does things. Praise God. So uh, thank you for listening, guys. And may the Lord bless you.